In this video, we look at the concept of recursion in computer science. Recursion is essentially to define something, or a task, or an operation, using that same task or operation. So we would define something using that same thing. So we would use ourselves to define ourselves. And uh, this basically gives us this what we call this recursion. And this, this concept comes up in computer science in the form of functions defining themselves. So when you define a function, so you would have the function prototype, right? And then whatever comes after the curly braces here in C, for example, this would be the definition of a function. So it would be a bunch of statements that define the operation of this function. If within that function you have somewhere a statement that calls that same function, that we're trying to define, then we see that this function is a recursive function. <clears throat> so a recursive function is a function that calls itself. This function is calling itself right here. So it's defining itself using itself, but on a smaller scale. And we'll see how this uh, works out. So how does this become useful in computer science? Well, this operation, or this the use of recursion, it really helps us in terms of defining certain tasks that uh, could be defined in similar subtasks. So there are certain tasks that we want to define or write up in code that lend themselves to being defined using similar subtasks. And we'll see at some examples right here. So before we look at the examples, it is important to define how a recursive function would play out in code. A recursive function would have two cases. It would have a recursive case and a base case. The recursive case is essentially where the recursion happens, that is the call to self. This is where you're calling yourself within your definition. So a recursive function is defined, so this is the definition, by two cases, by two steps. There would be a recursive step and that recursive step basically calls itself to perform a subtask. So suppose that task was to divide by 5, then I will also call that same function which is to divide, but, but I will use it on a subtask. So suppose divide by 2, which I've defined as being a subproblem. And then we would have a base case. This case is non-recursive, and we need a base case. Because if we didn't have a base case, then what would happen? You would keep on calling yourself over and over again, and you would be stuck in a loop. So we need a non-recursive uh, case, or a base case, this is what we call it, where all of, the, all of the other cases are handled by the recursive step in order to be led to the base case. So any other input would go through the recursive case, there would be multiple calls to the same function to reduce the task to smaller and smaller and smaller subtasks until we reach the base case where there is no call again to the same function. And at the base case what we do is that we simply return a simple value, something that could be evaluated without the need of a recursion, and then we would come back up and then work our way right all the way back up in order to get our solution to the overall problem. So we had a problem or a task, we divided it into subtasks that are very similar to the original task. We kept on doing this until we reached the base case and then we solved that and then we went all the way back up, worked all the way back up to get the solution to the original problem. So let's look at some examples here. The factorial operation. This is an operation that many of you are familiar with and the way this is defined is as follows. It also has a recursive case and a base case. The recursive case says that for any uh, number that is passed to the factorial operation which is larger than one then all we're going to do is we will perform this operation. So this is our task. The task is to get the factorial of n, right? And the subtask will be to get the factorial. So we're still with the factorial. So we're defining ourselves, we're defining the factorial operation using the factorial operation, but on a smaller task. We're saying we're, we're taking n minus 1. So we're essentially reducing our problem. So if n was 5, then we would call 5 factorial, well then we would have 5 times 5 minus 1 factorial. 5 minus 1 is 4. So 4 factorial, right? So we're essentially performing the same operation again. We're calling fa the, the factorial operation, but on a smaller subtask. 
So we are defining the factorial operation using the factorial operation. We're defining that operation using the same operation. And this is the recursive case. This is where we always go back within the factorial operation. At one point, we will reach the base case. The base case will be 1 factorial or 0 factorial. These two cases have a simple solution. There is no call to the factorial operation anymore. You just return 1. So, and we'll see how this works out. You will go from 5, you will reduce it to subproblems while keeping this in memory. So then you will take the 4 factorials that we got right here, come to this point. 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 factorial. 3 would come right here, 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 factorial, and so on and so forth until you reach the base case. Once you get your solution, you work your way back up to where you came from in order to get the solution to 5 factorial. So this is how a, recurs a recursion works out in the factorial operation case. Now what about the Fibonacci sequence? The Fibonacci sequence is defined as follows. You have, this is the definition of a Fibonacci, so we're we're passing you an integer, n, and we want the Fibonacci of that number. How do we get it? Then this is the definition. We're calling the Fibonacci once more, in fact twice, on smaller subtasks. So we are taking our n, we're subtracting 1 from it, and we are calling the Fibonacci once more. So we're going back to that step. And then we are taking our n, we're subtracting 2, and doing the same thing again. So you see how I'm calling myself to define myself. I'm defining this operation by using myself. And then the base case would be at one point, once we've reduced our big large n to some number, these will be the two numbers, at 0 or 1, once n becomes 0 or 1, then we stop right there and we return the base cases. So if it's 0, we return 0. If it's 1, then we return 1. And then we work our way all the way back up until we get the Fibonacci of n. So if we went through this very quickly, suppose we had the Fibonacci of uh, 2, then this would be defined as Fibonacci of 2 minus 1 is 1, plus Fibonacci of 2 minus 2 is 0. And then we would work our way with these again. So we'd have to execute these or get, evaluate that expression. That expression would come back right here and we would see that Fibonacci of 1 does not require recursion. It gives you a 1 right away. Fibonacci of 0 does not require recursion as well. It gives you a 0. And then 1 plus 0 is 1, so Fibonacci of 2 is 1. What if we had Fibonacci of 3? How would you do that? You would have Fibonacci of 2 plus Fibonacci of 1, right? Fibonacci of 2 we've already calculated here. See, we're defining the Fibonacci of 3 as two recursive calls. And the Fibonacci of 2 is itself also recursive calls. But here we've reached the base cases. So we get 1 plus 0. And then we got our 1 right here. We take it, we place it right here. Fibonacci of 1, of course, is non-recursive as well, like we said here. So this will be 1. So you'd have for Fibonacci 3, you would have 2. And this is how recursion works. And we'll see it, uh, we'll look at some code examples and at some other issues that come up in terms of recursion.